Ford Focus, a British institution if ever there was one. An American British institution if ever there was one. When the first Focus replaced the Ford Escort in 1998, it was genuinely revolutionary. Like they'd obviously been hatchbacks before, but the way the Focus approached the details was groundbreaking. The little thoughtful things that actually make living with a car easy. I'll just let this gentleman from the 90s explain it. It's a remote control device for undoing the boot. Child locks, which need a key to operate them. Tail lights way up here, so following traffic can see them more easily. In the subsequent two decades, it's got fatter and a bit more confusing inside and lost quite a bit of its personality. And other hatchbacks have got much better, of course. But that stuff doesn't matter because since day one, the Focus has been a mainstay in the top five best-selling cars in the UK. Two million sold since 98, and actually the UK's best-selling car for nine out of the last 20 years. And you know, the public aren't daft. Anything that's been that popular, that consistently, Bound to be brilliant. Oh, have to go. <laughs> See? Really though, the Focus has always been brilliant in many ways. But to be honest, a lot better when you're looking in that direction than when you're looking a bit further down. I'm saying the driving experience is better than the cabin. Probably could have said it better. Anyways, while the Volkswagen Golf was consistently raising the bar for family hatchback interior ambiance and perceived quality, the Focus was... Well, the Mark II was boring and the third one had more buttons than Audition Day for Cinderella. And so it comes as a lovely surprise that this Focus, the fourth one if you're counting, has made like Cinderella herself and given buttons the elbow. Anyways, the upshot is it no longer looks like Ford has glued a portable CD player to the Focus's dashboard. It now looks like they've glued an iPad to it instead, which is much better. It's a really welcome surprise just how functional and uncluttered it is in here. And yet it is that while also being more interesting than, say, a Volkswagen Golf. Don't get me wrong, it's far from a visual... Mardi Gras? You set down your gins and confess your sins. <laughs> but it's much classier than any Focus before. And it feels well made, it's mostly soft touch in that. And the software in the touch screen is good. It's easy to understand and it's bright and clear. Although it isn't standard fit, obviously. Buy a basic Focus and your big color touch screen becomes a little LCD one. Speaking of which, let's get the spec stuff out the way with at this point. Gone are the days when Ford would price the Focus on the high side so that the dealers could slash thousands off the price. Instead, you get a reasonably priced family car now without all the discount nonsense. So there are a gazillion of these family hatchback things to choose from it's one of the older segments after all so i've just picked these ones from the top of my head but what you see here is that the focus lands right in the middle of the whole pricing thing and in any event this is all pretty pointless really because clearly the pricing's not putting that many people off a bit pointless talking about equipment too really there are five trim levels i think let me remember hang on so the basic one's called style then there's zetec or ztec which is a bit sportier then there's ST line, which is sportier still, and then the fancy one's called Titanium. Ah! There's a Titanium X, and then there's the proper fancy pants one with the leather dashboard and stuff. It's pronounced Vignali, I believe. You can spend upwards of 30 grand on one, and it's Ford's crack at having a go at the proper premium market. Sort of like spending a thousand pounds on a Tesco bag for life that's been covered in unicorn skin. And you know, I don't really think there's that much point in going through the equipment of this thing because it does have everything you need at any point in the range, including the bottom. Like here's the style one, bottom level. And as you can see, it's got alloys, aircon, DAB radio, a way of connecting your phone to it, a spare wheel, a pretty cool rotary gear selector if you've got an auto, and it's even got switchable driving modes, which Ford could easily have saved for the sportier stuff. Which brings us neatly onto the main bit, the driving thing. What can I say? In the tradition of all the previous focuses, Fokai, before it, it's pretty flipping bloody excellent. Well, this particular one is anyway. This one being a <laughs> X. With a manual gearbox and a one litre EcoBoost engine. It's of serendipity, but Ford happens to have sent me the Focus that I think I would actually buy. This three cylinder EcoBoost engine isn't perfect, but it's a lot of fun in its own weird sort of way. It's nowhere near capable of its claimed MPG. All over the last week, I've had about 45 miles per gallon out of this, which actually 
is okay. But beyond that, it's just a really cool engine. It sounds great, it's really smooth, it's unbelievably quiet at idle. And the character it has, you know, the way it sounds and the way it goes, is a million times more pleasant than what you'd get from a diesel engine. The one thing I would say though, is that it's so lacking in low end torque that you're constantly shuffling around the gears. On the one hand, that's okay because this is a lovely gearbox. It's light and it's polished and it's generally nice. But on the other hand, it can get a bit tiresome. I don't think I've ever driven a hatchback that feels this light at the front end. Porsches and stuff do, but they don't have an engine there. And that makes this car feel really agile, really quick to change direction. The steering's lovely and light too, which sort of contributes to that feeling. Overall, right, this just feels like a very, very well polished product. No matter where you put it, motorway, around the doors, B roads, it just fits, you know? And easy to live with. Nothing groundbreaking in the cabin, but it does all the right stuff. Loads of rear leg room. Boot is a decent size, albeit not furnished with a whole lot of additional practicality accoutrement. There's a couple of hooks in that to your lock, basically. And there's a decent amount of cabin storage. And it's got door protectors, which, although not unique to Ford, is a nice touch, especially if you've got absent minded kids which most of them are. Having said that, an unfortunate side effect is that you don't get that satisfying clunk when you shut the door, which is indicative for many people of a quality car. Instead, it sounds like you're kicking the side of a plastic tool shed. And one other major thing to note is that your focus experience really is spec dependent. I think more than any other family hatchback I've ever driven. On the one hand, whichever focus you buy, it's five star safe and there's probably a Ford dealership about 30 seconds walk from your house. But on the other, the engine and the trim and the options you choose really do have a significant effect on your experience here. Again, this particular one is brilliant. But not so long ago, we had one in the office, which was a diesel ST line with an automatic gearbox. I didn't drive it, but the general consensus was engine's noisy and the gearbox isn't that pleasant. The ride quality was poor. Now, aside from the gearbox, that can only really be because the engine's heavier and the suspension's lower and the wheels are bigger with narrower sidewalls on the tires. And in the Focus, those differences seem to have a more dramatic effect than they do in other cars. Now, you can also get a version with different rear suspension, which is more basic than the setup that this one has. And that means the handling isn't quite as good. And if you like, you can get adaptive damping. It's a bit of a minefield. And it means that it's imperative that you try a Focus with exactly the same setup as the one that you're thinking about buying before you actually do. It's no good going for a test drive in whatever the dealer's got in the car park at the time. There's a wide engine range and it will take far too long to go through them all here. But suffice to say, we'd always recommend one of the EcoBoost petrols. And that's for their superior driving experience, their refinement, lower buying price, lower NOx emissions, and relatively decent fuel economy. Just altogether more pleasant. Basically, buy the right focus and you're buying into something that really feels like it deserves its ubiquity. It sounds like damning it with faint praise, but the best thing that I can say about this car is that I've really enjoyed having it over the last week because I expected it to be depressingly mainstream and a bit forgettable for that reason, kind of like the Astra is. You know, like it's had all the personality polished right out of it. So you're left with something that does a good job, but is also instantly forgettable, like the Chainsmokers, the band that is. Hey. Doing just fine. Not the group of people that you find in and around hospitals. So for once, I would say that it's okay to go with the crowd. In fact, it's positive. Thanks for watching. Please look at our other stuff. Please share this if you liked it. And please subscribe to the channel. That helps us out a lot. See you next week. Bye.